Hi, I'm Jake Worley, and I am so happy and blessed to be the rector of St. Andrews. The Sermon on the Mount is one of the most treasured and amazing teachings of Christianity, and Jesus, what he's doing in the Sermon on the Mount, found in Matthew chapter 5 and, and following, is he's talking about uh, what it looks like to be the kingdom of God. What are the priorities of the kingdom of God? And he's talking to the rank and file people that are around him, so he's talking to us as well. After those famous words about the Beatitudes, at the very beginning of the sermon, Jesus says to these people, he says, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and, and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to the whole house. In the same way, he says, in the same way of being that light, you are the light, and let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. What makes this so poignant and what Jesus is saying to us, again, the rank and file people of God is that part of our natural, everyday, common activity is used by God to bring Him glory as we serve Him in real practical ways. We have as a part of our calling in this kingdom the need to bring the light of Christ to the world around us and through the things that we do and say. We are evangelists for the glory of God, for Jesus, in the context of not only our words, but in our very life and our actions. St. Andrews, we have so many opportunities. They're abounding to engage in this evangelism, to be the light of the world. We have a great history here of getting involved in service and in outreach, direct evangelism and learning. And we do so much of it that sometimes it's hard to know exactly what's going on. And certainly, no one, no single person can do everything that's going on here at St. Andrews, can get involved in everything. And so what St. Andrews has done in the past has been to provide an opportunity to just see what's happening, to give every one of our parishioners ways to get involved and to get to know and to try new things, to get engaged in the ministries that we do. And we've called it Rally Day. Typically, Rally Day has been a great celebration We've had food, we've had fellowship, we've had fun, we've had games, it's been wonderful. But this year, we're doing things a little bit differently. 2020 has been different. This year will be the very first St. Andrews virtual rally day. While we can't gather together in person right now because of the need of social distancing and to care for many of us who cannot come in person, virtual rally day will be a great way to learn more about all those different ministries and ways to get involved and to serve each other and the world around us. There's lots of exciting opportunities available and you'll be able to see the descriptions of each ministry and contact information if you'd like more information and to get involved yourself. Every year in Rally Day, we bless an area in the community with donations that we gather through Rally Day. This year, we're supporting the Taste Community Kitchen. Their mission, the Taste Community Kitchen's mission is to feed, educate, and serve our community so that they may taste and see that the Lord is good. You can donate to the Taste Kitchen through the Realm app that you know about or on our website there will be a link there and be sure to eat there when you get a chance. It's a great way to support them and they do have really really good food. Now we still plan to have a rally day reception at some point in the near future when we're all able to come back together again very soon but in the meantime Right now, please enjoy this Rally Day video and get involved in St. Andrews. Watch these videos. Pray about what you can do and what God is calling you to do to be that light where you are and to share the many other things that we do here at St. Andrews. We can let other people know who don't know about St. Andrews through these videos. And so I want to encourage you to just get involved and watch these videos and pray about them. Thank you and God bless. Hello, I'm Phyllis Leach. The St. Andrew's Altar Guild assists the parish clergy by preparing the altars of the church and chapel for various Sunday and weekday worship services, as well as numerous special services such as Christmas, Easter, weddings and baptisms, even songs, funerals, and confirmation. The Altar Guild cares for the silver vessels, brass, linens, hangings, candles, flowers, and the traveling kits used by the priest and lay Eucharist visitors. Quarterly, 
we conduct thorough general cleanings of the altar areas and baptistries and polish all the silver. We make approximately 1,000 crosses to be distributed to Union Gospel Mission and San Miguel and to our parishioners for Palm Sunday. We maintain the greenery in the church, chapel, and Moncrief Hall during Advent, and we add the poinsettias and the bows on the wreaths for Christmas. Membership is open to all St. Andrew's women who have a sincere interest and ability to commit fully to the time and responsibility of attending the altars. A membership invitation is extended by the rector. The Altar Guild is organized into four teams, which rotate weekly throughout the year. Each team is led by a team leader. The Altar Guild operates using a committee system, distributing leadership responsibilities among its members. Business meetings are held periodically throughout the year, generally on the first Tuesday of the month. Due to current circumstances caused by the coronavirus, the Altar Guild has suspended the recruitment and acceptance of new members. Hopefully, we will be able to welcome new members towards the end of 2021. Hello everyone, my name is Molly Bryant and I am here to report on our Anglicans for Life ministry here at St. Andrews. Anglicans for Life is in a unique position that applies spiritual and biblical truth to human life issues. Due to the nature of the organization, Anglicans for Life content must always involve both Christian principles as well as human life challenges. Anglicans for Life is a Christ-centered ministry that upholds biblical principles concerning the sacredness of life in the Anglican Church. Anglicans for Life is the global Anglican ministry that educates, equips, and engages the Anglican Church in fulfilling Scripture's mandate to protect vulnerable, defend the fatherless, and plead for the widow. The St. Andrews chapter of Anglicans for Life participates in our local 40 Days for Life campaign of peaceful 40-day, 24-hour prayer outside Planned Parenthood on John Ryan Drive in southwest Fort Worth. Our ministry is proud to report that we had several St. Andrews members last year on the curb one day a week for an hour or more for a 40-day period. St. Andrews Anglicans for Life also participates in the Dallas March for Life, which ends with a rally and a guest speaker. Last year, we were pleased to uh, witness Eric Metaxas in action. Our ministry not only engages in peaceful prayer against the ending of human life, but we also come alongside women who are suffering, and we support uh, greatly the Fort Worth Pregnancy Lifeline, uh, both financially and uh, with gifts in kind. So if you're interested in joining our efforts, uh, please contact me at mbryant at standandrew.com. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. I'm Glenda Robinson, and this is Amanda Daly. And we are the directors of the St. Andrews Children's Choir. We are ready to begin meeting at our new time of 6 o'clock on Wednesday evenings. This is a new adventure for the whole church. We'll have children's choir at 6, and then a dinner following at 6.30, and then there will be activities for both the adults and the children. So we hope you will join us at six o'clock on Wednesday evenings. Watch the St. Andrew's Voice and all the announcements for the exact start date. We are going to have children from ages six to twelve and we will meet in the choir room and make beautiful music together. We'll sing, we'll play instruments, and once a month, we're going to have a guest musician with us. Maybe it will be Scott with his guitar or some of his other instruments. Miss Betty Cross is going to come and teach us some sign language to go with our pieces. We have several instrumentalists around the church who will come and show us what they do. We would love to have you join us. If you're interested, please email me at grobinson at st-andrew.com 
or you can just call the church office. Watch for announcements because we're very excited to get started again. Thank you. Hope to see you. Hi, I just wanted to give you a little info in what we've been up to in children's ministries and what we will be doing in the upcoming weeks. So online right now, we have been posting a video every week as well as some worksheets. The curriculum we use right now in children's ministry is the orange curriculum. The material includes Bible stories, questions, activities, and memory verses. We will continue to use those videos online but the good news is we will meet in person again October 4th. So we can't wait to see you. Hi everybody, I'm Scott Perry and I lead our Wednesday evening Compline service. Compline is a brief prayer service for nighttime. It's meant to complete the day. We started Compline back in Lent uh, and since March, it has been online uh, on our St. Andrew's Virtual Content YouTube channel. Compline includes uh, music, sometimes hymns, but often newer music and original music, prayers, a reading, and a talk. For a while, our talks have been on the appointed epistle passages. So if you look back through previous videos, you'll find a series of talks, pretty deep studies uh, through Paul's letter to the Romans. This fall, we plan to resume uh, having Compline in person, but until then, uh, check out our previous sessions online. Uh, see if there are any studies on, on passages that you are especially uh, interested in or, or have questions about, and keep an eye on our new website for more information. We'll see you soon. I'm Dr. Jason Runnels. I'm the choir master here at St. Andrews. And along with the organist, Glenda Robinson, uh, we head up the music program. The major part of our music program is the adult choir, which uh, consists of both volunteers and some paid singers. The paid singers uh, generally are students from colleges or universities or have studied music extensively. But then we generally have around 10 to 12 volunteers. If you are interested in volunteering for the choir, we would love to have you sing with us. All you need to do is contact me at jrunnels at st-andrew.com or the organist, Glenda Robinson, grobinson at st-andrew.com. We do a number of different services during the year. Uh, primarily, the choir sings for morning worship, which is morning prayer and communion. Then we also will sing uh, even song occasionally, which is a song evening service, as well as some of our special holiday services, Christmas Eve, Good Friday, Maundy Thursday, Palm Sunday, things like that, liturgical holidays. But if you are interested, we would love to hear from you, and hopefully we'll get to see you here in our church soon. Thanks. Hi everybody, a word about evening prayer at St. Andrews. Since March, evening prayer has been online on the St. Andrews Virtual Content YouTube channel. Evening prayer includes arrangements of hymns and original music on guitar, the prayers and readings, and a homily, sometimes a Bible study after the service in Coslow Library. For a while now, our homilies have stuck to the gospel readings. So if you look back through previous services, uh, you'll find a preaching series through the gospel of Matthew. For now, evening prayer will remain online, uh, viewable on our YouTube channel Sunday evenings at 5.15 p.m. Evening prayer is meant to be a companion to morning prayer, uh, and it's a great way to end the day prayerfully, uh, worshipfully, meditating on scripture together. Check out the channel, see if there are any previous uh, homilies working through passages you are especially interested in or, or have questions about. Keep an eye on our new website for more information. We'll see you online. Hello, my name is Elaine Lambert and I am the head of the funeral committee. 
We started the funeral committee several years ago as a way to welcome guests and visitors that show up to our church for a sad occasion for a funeral. And many people have never been to our church before and they don't know where to go or where to park, especially if it's on a weekday and our parking lot becomes full. So what we need is a list of volunteers that we can email every time there is a funeral, which hopefully isn't too often. And we email people to see who's available that day to come out and work as a greeter, either in the parking lot, at the main church door, or in the courtyard. And these greeters are just available to answer people's questions and to direct them to the church or to the bathroom or to the family, wherever it is that they need to go. By signing up for the funeral committee, you're not committing to actually have to come to any of the funeral services. We start 45 minutes before the funeral begins and we end right after the funeral starts. And you can then go home or you can go on to attend the funeral if you knew the person. I'd love to have you sign up for the ministry and to get on our list. The more people we have on the list, the better able we are to staff the funerals when they happen. Thank you. Hi, I'm Karis Spooner and I'm a parishioner here at St. Andrews and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Great Books. Great Books meets the third Monday of every month at 6.30 p.m. in Coslo Library and I'm not sure what we're going to be doing for October, whether we'll be in person or meeting online through Zoom. We did that uh, back in May and um, it worked out really well. So we might be doing that again. And if we're meeting here at the church, we might not be meeting in Coslo. Maybe we'll meet in Moncrief Hall, but we'll let you know. When we get together, we eat a meal together and people bring wine to share. And sometimes we have a speaker talk for a little bit and then we discuss our book. This fall, uh, we're gonna start out with Confessions by St. Augustine. And this is the particular version we're gonna use, the translation by Sarah Rudin. Uh, it's got a pear on it. It looks really big, but it's not that long. It's spaced out kind of in the margins a lot. But that's what we're going to start with. We'll probably spend a couple months on it, but we will begin that discussion in October. So once we get the books in, you guys can pick it up from the front office and then you can just begin reading it and then we will discuss it um, on October 19th which is the third Monday night. We do have child care available if you make a reservation. For more information you can visit our website or you can contact the front office to get put on the email list. Thanks! My name is Suzanne Hearn and I'm here to tell you about the Greek reading class that we do at St. Andrews. A lot of people would ask why would anyone want to learn Greek when you can read it in the English perfectly fine and, and that is absolutely true but it is the language which the founding document of our faith was written in and there's something very deeply satisfying about reading in the original language. Another good reason that you might want to learn the Greek is that it's very very hard in the English translation to see the difference between the different authors because the English smooths it all out. So for instance John writes differently than Paul does and it's really easy to see it when you're translating it from the original language. Think about your favorite novel, why you like it. It's probably as much as anything else the way the author articulates the English language. And the same is true in the Greek. The thing that got me and made me want to learn it was someone said to me, think about Shakespeare, probably one of the masters of the English language, and it's been translated into every other language. But if you were a German speaking person and you loved Shakespeare, you might go to the trouble to learn the English so that you could enjoy it as it was originally penned. Well, that's what's got me. And then one little final thing is that sometimes when I'm reading along in the Greek and I have to struggle for it because it is hard, it's like, you know how when you look at the surface of water and you see all the different reflections and then you put on your Polaroid glasses and suddenly you can see the fish beneath the surface? Sometimes I get that feeling when I'm translating from the Greek. Just a little bit, I'm struggling hard, and then I just see a little bit more that I hadn't seen before. So what we're currently doing that you might be interested in is we are meeting online. We've been doing it on Zoom for a while, primarily because we're all in different locations. So for instance, my co-leader, my partner in crime is Edwin Robert. You might know him. 
and he's currently in law school at Washington and Lee. But he has a degree in the classics from UT and he speaks Greek and Latin as well as having a love for the scriptures. So he's a wonderful resource and we're together by Zoom doing this. Myself, my background in the Greek is simply that I learned it here as a lowly lay person from Dr. Dixon when he was the rector here. And I'm proof to you that it can be done with enough hard work. So what we're doing currently online is that we meet as a group and we'll take a passage of scripture from the Bible. And what we will do is take turns translating it from the Greek and we'll help each other and we try not to look at any English. Eventually we will look at the English to check ourselves and then finally we'll begin to discuss the text itself and any kind of light that the translation sheds on the English meaning. I think someone who had not had any Greek or didn't even intend to learn Greek could enjoy what we're doing. It's not strictly translation at all, it's translation and Bible study. So I'll offer that to you if that seems interesting to you. If we do have some that come who want to learn Greek, then we'll adjust the class so that we'll have part of the time in learning the Greek and conquering the grammar and then part of the time in Bible translation and reading. So I hope that sounds interesting to you and if you think you might want to do it you can contact the church office and get my email and you just need to shoot me an email so that I can send you a link to that meeting. Greek is really hard to learn but it's very self satisfying and totally worth the effort if you think you have the time to put into it. So I hope you'll give that a thought. Welcome to St. Andrews. Do those sound like words you could say? Do you like to meet people? Do you like to greet people? Do you like to see your friends? Do you like to meet new people? Well, if you answered yes to any of those questions, then we invite you to be a greeter at St. Andrews on Sunday mornings. You'll meet people that you haven't met before. You'll see your friends. It's a great way to start your Sunday morning. My name is Michelle McConnell and I invite you to join our greeter ministry. Hi, I'm Lindsay Lindley, the kitchen coordinator, and I just wanted to give you a little info about what we do here in the kitchen. We serve breakfast every Sunday. We do Wednesday night dinners when there is a program going on. Sometimes we even have Sunday evening dinners as well. Food is prepared and served throughout the year for various meetings and events and receptions that we have here at St. Andrews. Every year we serve approximately 10,000 plates through this kitchen. So we are always looking for volunteers to help us prep and serve the food here in the kitchen. So if you're interested in doing that, please contact the front office or myself and we can get that info to you. We will be resuming our Sunday morning breakfast October 4th, so we hope to see you then. Anyone who enjoys stitching and fellowship is invited to attend St. Margaret's Guild. My name is Danielle and I'm the ministry leader for St. Margaret's. Our ongoing generational project is needle pointing canvases for all the kneelers in our church. Instructions are given periodically as needed for this. Our art designer, Sheila, takes a plain piece of canvas and hand paints that, and then we get stitchers to stitch that. I interview the stitchers to be sure they've got their stitching uh, correctly. All our kneelers are done in the basket weave stitch. The kneeler covers are commissioned by anyone wishing to make a lasting memorial to a loved one or in memory and appreciation for a friend or a loved one. This is an example of one of the needlers that has been dedicated and is now in our church pews. In addition, we knit and crochet baby blankets for newborns in our church. Anyone who would like to fellowship with other stitchers while working on other projects, such as quilting, beading, cross stitch, or any other stitch that you enjoy doing are welcome to come join us. We meet on the third Tuesday of each month in this room, which is known as Coslo's here at the church. Periodically through the year, we'll have off-site meetings, which are announced. Please come and join us and use your God-given talents if you feel you do not know how to stitch very well. 
come and join us for the fellowship and we will teach you how. There's always room for everyone and everyone is welcome. Good afternoon everyone, or good morning as the case might be. My name is Barbara Ragsdale and I'm the meal coordinator for St. Martha's Gill. St. Martha's helps St. Andrew's parishioners when they need help. If a family member has passed away or perhaps someone's had a baby or they've been in the hospital and they come home, they need a few meals to carry them through until their strength is back and they can get on their feet again. That's what St. Martha's does. We provide meals, we donate our time, our services, we have served hundreds of meals over the years to many families. My contact information is on the St. Andrews website under Ministries, and I'd love to hear from you because St. Martha's Guild serves the parish with a great love and concern and a lot of care. We would love to have you join us and be part of this very meaningful ministry. Thank you and have a good afternoon. Hi, Richard and I are here to talk about the Brotherhood of St. Andrew. Not St. Andrews, but the Brotherhood of St. Andrew, which is our men's group. And we are currently studying the Gospel of John. We're in chapter 8 right now, but we'll be on it probably for the rest of this year or close to it. We meet every Tuesday morning beginning at 645 for morning prayer, an abbreviated version of morning prayer and then we get together both in Coslo and also on Zoom to discuss the lesson for that week. And we are also available for service once the pandemic is over. We for a long time have served lunch on the first Tuesday of each month over at Ronald McDonald House. We are available to help people move or do other things that men are good at. Call us if you need us and we'll look forward to helping any way we can. Come join us. Did you mention the peanut butter and jelly? I did not. He did not mention the peanut butter and jelly. Why don't you mention the peanut I'll butter? I'll mention the peanut butter and jelly. So we are members of the sandwich ministry. We like to go heavy on the peanut butter so that when the recipients grab one of those sandwiches, it kind of weighs them down a little bit. So we pride ourselves in plenty of peanut butter and we're part of the group that I believe we make 12 loaves every Tuesday morning in remembrance of the 12 disciples maybe the 12 tribes of Israel maybe so. I don't know could be yeah. anyway but the sandwiches are substantial they are could be the 12 months of the year I'm not quite sure in any event come join us we'd love to have you our study is open to great discussion and spiritual enrichment so we'd love to have you we have a lot of fun and we also try to ask at the end of each lesson how shall we then live in other words how does what we've discussed apply to our lives and the lives of those we influence yep. so looking forward to it everyone. I get to talk about one of the most fun things of the whole year. That's the church's annual nativity pageant. And it's just such a joyous thing. And you know, we probably shouldn't even call it a nativity pageant. We should probably call it just a big Bible pageant because it covers lots of stories in the Bible that happened way before the birth of Jesus. And we usually have it in mid-December because that's in the season of Advent. And we like to go way, way back, all the way back to Adam and Eve and Noah and the flood just to let everyone know, to help us all remember that God was doing a wonderful work and he was preparing the world for many, many hundreds of years before Jesus came. And so those are such great lessons that the birth of Jesus just didn't happen. God was doing something for hundreds of thousands of years before Jesus was born. And so, you know, you can be almost any age to be in the pageant. You can be two or three, you can be a nursery age, you can be elementary, you can be middle school, you can be high school, you can even be entering college 
And that's a fun thing because this pageant is for everyone. It's a big family affair and we haven't picked out the date yet. It'll be in mid-December and I've talked to our rector. We think we're going to be able to have a big pageant this year. I know this year has been kind of a little unusual and so if we have to adjust it a little bit, we will. But we think we're going to have a great time and, and it's just a joy. Beautiful music, fun. The main thing is it teaches us about our Lord and Savior Jesus. And so I just think we're going to have a great time. And you can be a parent or a grandparent. You can just be a high schooler. You can be a grandmother to volunteer. You don't have to be a mom or dad. And so we hope many of you will come help us out. With costuming or props, it's all just offered to the glory of God. So stay tuned for all the details. So I'm going to turn to these children, and I'm going to ask what they like about the pageant. So let's see, Libby, you want to just tell us something that you like about the, the Nativity pageant? Um, my favorite thing about the Nativity pageant is we get to like tell the Bible story. The, the Bible story. Oh, that's so right. And it just it makes them sink into our heart, doesn't it? Oh, wow, that's beautiful. I remember you were up in the big pulpit last year, and you read from the pulpit, and that was really special. Not many of us get to go in the pulpit and read. That was great. And so what about you, Margaret? What did you like about the pageant? You were beautiful. I think you were a character and an angel too last year. That was wonderful. And look at Claire. You're a little lamb, a little white woolly lamb. And you know, there were lots of lambs around Jesus' crib, weren't there? So I, I bet you're going to be a fun animal this year too. Now Savannah, where are you? Savannah, what, what did you like about the pageant last year? You like the songs? They were really fun, weren't they? And they taught us about Jesus. And remember, they taught us about Advent. Remember that song we sang at the end with the candles about counting off the weeks of Advent? Was that a special song for you? Yeah. Well, you were beautiful. I don't know if you were a white angel or a gold last year, but you were beautiful. And it looks like you're in white angel attire this time. So let's see, Patrick, you were an animal last year, I think. But it looks like you're a little shepherd now. Are you going to have fun being a shepherd this year? Yes. Oh, oh, good. Well, you've got your shepherd staff, don't you? Yeah, I gave it to Oh, and you know what? This is a great teaching tool because this reminds us that Jesus is our good shepherd. You know that? This reminds us that Jesus was the best shepherd of all because he cared about all of us as children, just like a good shepherd cares for sheep, right? So that's why, just like a shepherd pulls his sheep back, Jesus protects us and that's why shepherds carry these hooks to take care of their sheep so you're going to be a great shepherd this year so i'm going to start over here gravani this is gravani why he's a freshman this year but i'm hoping you'll be in the pageant you've been great in it the last couple of years tell us what you've enjoyed about it well what i enjoyed was that so many people were able to get together and have fun learning about jesus and learning about the church and just Overall, having a great time with expressing this story. I hope you'll join us this year. Okay, and Brianna, what, what have you liked about the pageants before? I like pretending to be the Bible characters, and that's how you learn more about the Bible characters. Well, that's me. That's right. You feel like you actually are walking in their shoes, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Well, I certainly hope you'll be with us again. I know you like drama, too. Oh, and, and Mary Frances, what have you enjoyed about the pageant? I like how the pageant, everybody takes the time to be so kind, and they always teach us everything the way how we have to learn it. And it's always so fun how we have the rehearsals, and everybody just gets to like be what they want to be, and they get to do their act like they want to. Well, you, you worked hard. I know you worked hard on your readings, and I could tell that all of you worked hard, and you really studied your readings, and... You were wonderful, and I was impressed. It takes courage to go up there and speak from the pulpit or over there. My goodness, we adults learned a lot from you. Annabelle, what would you like especially about the pageant? I like the, the props and the costumes. You like the props and costumes? That's neat. They are fun. Well, you look beautiful tonight, all of you. So, Bessie, what, what did you like about the pageant last year? I like how you can dress up and use the props, and it actually kind of feels like you're that person. Oh, you can you, learn more about them. And you learn more about them when you put on those props and costumes, don't you? Well, what is this you're holding right here? This is the star. The star of Bethlehem, isn't it? 
Wow, you look pretty comfortable with that. I bet some year, some year you might like to carry that. And you did a good job last year. You were a very good reader too. Okay, so Arthur, what did you like about the pageant the last year or two? I really liked the reading. You like the reading? I read and almost every year there's something that somebody, like not in particular, but like somebody makes some sort of, does something funny or something? There's some funny parts of the pageant, aren't there? The Bible has some humorous parts. You know, it's not all serious. There's some humorous parts in God's Word. Well, you've, you've been several good characters. You've really been a good reader and very character part. I hope you'll be in it again this year. So boys, boys, what, what have you enjoyed about? You've been in the pageant several years. Have you enjoyed something special, Charlie? Um, yes, ma'am. Like Arthur said, the reading and the script you like reading in the strip and working together. That is so nice. I noticed several of you said how fun it is to work together and to have a good time, and that's really important. So, okay, George Henry, you look like you're a Roman soldier. Yes, you, do you like that costume? I like it a lot. You like that a lot. Most boys do like the Roman soldiers. So tell me, what have you enjoyed about the pageant? Like You've been at two or three, since you were little, you were a little animal a few years ago, and now you've gotten older, so. What have you enjoyed about it? I liked how we switched off being people every year. Oh, being different people every year. Well, that's so fun. Yeah, you were an Old Testament character last year. Y'all are just great. Are you excited about this year? Yes. Everyone want to take part this year? Yes. yes. Well, I hope so, because it's going to be so much fun. And hopefully in about a month, we'll announce the date, and we'll probably start early November having practices. Let's close with a prayer, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for... Uh, just a wonderful opportunity each year to present your word, to learn more from your word as we act out the great stories of scripture. We just thank you for the privilege of just going through this pageant each year, getting dressed up and pretending that we're really in the shoes of some of these Bible characters. Help us to learn from them. Most of all, just help us to learn to love you more and more through the wonderful story that led up to Jesus' birth. Thank you for the gift of salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we offer this time up to you and even as we start preparing we offer the whole pageant up to you looking ahead to november and december i uh, thank you lord for your honor to all this to your honor and glory amen and welcome to Sunshine Sprouts Nursery. I am Lindsay Lindley, the nursery director here at St. Andrews. And we just wanted to give you a little inside look of what we are doing here in the nursery. We serve children ages six weeks to five years of age. We have four nursery rooms for the different ages of children. The four rooms are decorated and stocked with age appropriate toys and supplies. The starry night room is for our infants. In that room, you will find cribs, changing tables, jumpers, swings, and toys. This room also provides a place for our nursing mothers. The sunshine room is our young toddler room. In this room, you will find plenty of fun toys and activities. The under the sea room is for our older toddlers. In this room, you will find four play centers and plenty of manipulatives. Our last room is the art playroom which is used for all toddlers. In this room, you will find a small playground, trampoline, mini coaster, and train sets. Our nursery curriculum used every Sunday is the Bible ABCs. It's an introduction to the Bible through the letters of the alphabet. Each week, a new letter is introduced. There are also craft projects, coloring, and singing, and music to go along with each day. For more info, please visit our St. Andrews website listed below. Our mission statement guides all that we do as a parish. St. Andrews exists to worship God in the beauty of holiness and in spirit and truth, to win the loss of Jesus Christ and disciple every believer, to equip and empower every member for ministry and to spread God's kingdom through charitable righteous works locally and globally. A central focus of our life together as Jesus' disciples is becoming equipped to serve the Lord and our neighbor, finding out how he has called each of us to ministry. This summer, we offered an evangelism class to give some practical information on how we can minister in the context in which we live today. Developing relationships with people in our lives is essential to sharing the gospel with them. 
Peter tells us in 1 Peter 3.15 to always be prepared to have an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. People need that hope today more than ever. We were asked to write out our personal testimony and share it with someone in the class. Though this was challenging for some, it was a great start toward practical evangelism. Our course leader, the Reverend Dr. Shane Copeland, recommended the book Honest Evangelism by Rico Tice, a tool to help us reach our neighbors that can easily be used in any ministry. St. Andrews partners with several organizations that minister in Jesus' name, both locally and globally. As disciples, we are encouraged to engage personally in the work of these organizations, to be the hands and feet of Christ, serve his people, and extend his kingdom, whether across town or on the other side of the world. Opportunities to get out in the community are offered through our local Fort Worth ministry partners, including Camp Global Missions, Camp Crucis, Search Ministries, Victory Temple Ministries, Union Gospel Mission, and Wings of Hope Equitherapy. Due to COVID-19, some of these ministries are on hold, but we do pray that the Lord will open up opportunities to serve soon. Globally, St. Andrews has partnered with SOMA, Wycliffe Bible Translators, Trinity School for Ministry, and the Diocese of Northern Malawi. If you are interested in more information or want to get involved with any of these ministries, contact Reverend Brent Christian or go to the Outreach Partners page on our website. Hi everyone, I'm Molly Bryant and I'm here today with uh, St. Andrew's Prayer Troop Ministry. At St. Andrew's we believe deeply in the power of prayer and our prayer warriors. Every Sunday you will find a laity-led prayer service in Coslo Library beginning the first Sunday of October at 9 a.m. between the 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. services. We will be Zooming up until then, so you can contact me at mbryant at standrew.com to send you the link in order to join us. But we're super excited to be able to Zoom and be in person from here in the Coslo Library beginning the first Sunday in October. We are a special group at St. Andrews that was founded in 2011 with a specific mission to pray continually for all service men and women of each military branch in all areas of service and home life. We often participate in special initiatives and collections which help service men and women directly. We meet every First Communion Sunday of the month and we'll begin, uh, like I said, in Coslo Library soon. Just pray specifically for our troops. How can you get involved? You can call or email us to add a serviceman or woman's name to our specific prayer list. You can join our email list to receive specific updated prayers and requests for our servicemen and women. You can attend monthly prayer troop services held in Coslo Library every First Communion Sunday of the month. You can help with prayer troop initiatives such as sending care packages to servicemen and women or taking up collections. You can keep the prayer troop informed of local and or national outreach programs that we may participate in. Thank you very much. Hi, welcome to the St. Andrew Sandwich Ministry. My name is Debbie Mitchell and I'm the coordinator of all the volunteers that are interested in volunteering their time to make sandwiches that we have Union Gospel Mission uh, pick up in their delivery truck every day. And we make sandwiches five days a week. We begin between 8 and 8.30 in the morning. And there is a team of, I'd like to have a team of four people for each day. And only two people can be in the kitchen during this time of COVID. And so we would uh, rotate through the four people as we need to have on board two people every day in the kitchen. The East Door Ministry was the beginning of our sandwich ministry and it began in the 1950s. And uh, at that time, the Texas Employment Agency was in the building that the Ryan House now stands on. And so we would have people knocking at our back door asking for food. So in the 1980s, the East Door Ministry evolved 
into our partnership with Union Gospel Mission. And our service to Union Gospel Mission is to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We make about 100 a day. And uh, Union Gospel Mission hands these sandwiches out to the homeless on the sidewalk outside of Union Gospel Mission each afternoon on Lancaster Avenue. We sandwich makers enjoy the company of each other while we're making our sandwiches, and we know that the fruit of our labor is going to feed stomachs and hungry people in the afternoon. We would gladly like to see some more volunteers, and if you have an hour and a half of your time, one morning a week, please contact me. My email is D for Debbie, the last name Mitchell, at St. Andrew.com. So I'll be waiting here from y'all. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi, I'm Diane McMullen, and this is Michelle McConnell. Hi. And we want to welcome you to the shop at St. Andrews. We are your source for the gift that always gives twice. We carry ESV Bibles, children's Bibles, the 1928 Book of Common Prayer, devotionals, and other Christian books. We also have baptism gifts, wedding gifts, and actually we have gifts for all occasions. But here you can also find the gift of service. We have volunteer opportunities on Sundays and Thursdays, or if you can't be present in the shop during the week or on the weekends, you can be the volunteer schedule coordinator from home. Your investment of time gives the gift of hospitality and fellowship with other parishioners and also serves as a place to welcome and meet our visitors. The profits from our sales go to many mission outreaches, both within St. Andrews, like the choir and the sale from these beads that also benefited the Adira Foundation, and outside St. Andrews, like the sales from the Noah's Ark that benefited the Hurricane Harvey relief. But without you as a volunteer in the shop, none of these gifts would be possible. So please share your gift with us and become a volunteer in the shop at St. Andrews. And in keeping with our Taste Project beneficiary from Rally Day, we have decided that all of the profits from our St. Andrews Christmas toffee will be donated to them. So please look for order forms in the messenger and within the shop to get your pre-orders done for Christmas gifts, holiday gifts, anything that you might have coming up. And remember, the profits from this will go to Taste Project. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Glenn Petta, National Director of SOMA, Sharing of Ministries Abroad, and I'm delighted to be a part of this Rally Day festivity as we uh, watch all these things on video. It's a privilege to be a partner with St. Andrews in doing mission and ministry. We've been a partner since 1998 and uh, I'm delighted to be able to share with you. I'm not going to go into detail about uh, SOMA's ministry because I've shared a lot and you can go on our website uh, somausa.org and look. But the main thing about SOMA's ministry is about relationships and about restoring leaders and ministering to leaders. And I was privileged to have Jake on a mission in March with me in Uganda. We were ministering to 250 clergy and their spouses. And the impact of that is, is really priceless because God's work through a mission team enables the work of the Holy Spirit to come through and minister to these leaders. As we were ministering, there were different points that were very uh, distinctive in their ability to transform the community that was there. And one of those was when Jake did a foot washing as part of discipleship teaching of one of the members that was there. And it was just, uh, it was transformative. I, I looked up and the bishop was weeping because of what he was seeing, because he had never seen a white person washed the feet of a black man. And so the next thing we did was we went to the enthronement of the new Archbishop of Uganda. And so that was all pre-COVID. Now post-COVID you say, well, what are you doing since you can't do a, a mission? So what the Lord gave us is that we pivoted the ministry to where we're doing uh, conference calls with these leaders, these key international leaders 
with clergy in the U.S., to minister to clergy in the U.S. So we're getting ready to have our fifth one. We have about 40 to 50 clergy on the calls, and many have said that it's really their uh, sole survival. So we are so grateful to be a part of St. Andrew's ministry. Thank you so much for uh, supporting us, and God bless you. Hi, everybody. wanted to tell you about student ministry at St. Andrew's. Since March, our primary meeting time, Sunday School, has been online on the St. Andrew's Virtual Content YouTube channel. For some months now, we've been working through the appointed Old Testament readings. And since those skip around a lot, we've really been on a kind of tour of the Old Testament. These videos, like our time together in person normally would, uh, include music, prayer, uh, a reading from scripture, and a lesson. Starting on Sunday, October 4th, we will resume Sunday School in person uh, here in the youth rooms at 9.15 a.m. And we'll continue to work through uh, Old Testament readings. Sunday School will also still be made available online uh, if you'd like to participate virtually. In the meantime, check out the channel, uh, look back through Sunday School sessions that you might have missed, see if there are any videos about any passages you might be interested in or have any questions about. In October, we'll also be rebuilding uh, and resuming the rotation of our liturgical acolyte teams. Uh, so I'll be reaching out to acolytes about that. If you're interested in acolyting in the Sunday morning services uh, or have any other questions, reach out to me and see our new church website for more information. I'll see you soon. Our Sunday prayer team follows a simple format that guides us as we pray for our clergy, staff, services, and ministries. During COVID, we have been meeting on Sunday morning for 30 minutes via Zoom from 9 to 9.30 a.m., which allows those attending the 10.30 service to join the call before they leave home for church. Each week, we send out an email to our group along with the Zoom link. As the fall progresses, we hope to work out prayer gatherings both in person at church and online via Zoom. We look forward to getting back to our regular schedule of gathering in the chapel following the 8 a.m. service as we did before the restrictions. All are welcome to join us, whether it's every week, just once, or whenever you can, to join our hearts together to pray for the needs of our parish. Regular participation is not a requirement. The only requirement is the desire to seek the Lord in prayer for St. Andrews. Now more than ever, an important time to intercede for our church. To learn more or to receive the Zoom link, please go to Prayer Services on the Worship Ministries page of our website. Hi, I'm Tom Laker, and I'd like to welcome y'all to the Usher Ministry here at St. Andrews. What does it take to be an usher? Basically, not much a happy smiling face, a willingness to meet people, and a desire to greet people in a warm way when they enter the doors of the sanctuary each Sunday. We currently have about 30 ushers, five teams of six people each. We can always use more. People are absent, travel. We don't ever want people to feel like they have to be there on an assigned Sunday, so we like extra people. So if you're interested, please contact me, Tom Laker, at St. Andrews, or ask any of the ushers on a Sunday. Basically, we're here to greet people, to welcome them to the church, and to get them situated. The duties include handing out programs, helping people get seated if someone needs a hearing device. We also perform offertory, we pass the plates, we shuttle people up for communion, and then we uh, basically help people out at the end of the service. Uh, it doesn't take much. It's not rocket science. If it was, I couldn't do it, but I know you can. It's a great way to meet people. When I first started coming to St. Andrews 20 plus years ago, someone asked me if I'd be an usher. And it was a great way to meet other men on my usher team. It helped me put names and faces, people walking through the door. We're a social church, people like to talk. It's a great way to meet people. It doesn't take a lot of time to be an usher. Basically about 30 minutes added to the length of a service. Get there about 15 minutes early, help kind of get things set up and ready 
and then about 10 minutes afterwards to pick up. It's a great way to get to church on time. Probably once every four or five weeks you'll do a service. Uh, we let you know two or three months in advance what the schedule is so you can plan accordingly or find a substitute. The only requirement besides being happy and wanting to meet people is that we do ask that you wear a coat and tie on the days that you're assigned a suit preferably. Other than that, just come with a smiling face, a hand ready to extend and say hello to people, and a desire to serve St. Andrews. Again, if you're interested in helping out and being an usher, please contact the church office, myself, or any one of the ushers. Thank you. I'm Marslyn Moncrief and I'm one of the leaders of the Women's Thursday Morning Bible Studies here at St. Andrews. And this fall we're excited about a new study that we're going to be doing called Get Out of Your Head by Jenny Allen. And it has a study guide along with a book which is optional. It's basically about the writings of Paul from Philippians and other writings. And it is helpful in having us curb our thoughts that our emotions and circumstances sometimes cause us to spiral into. And I'm hoping that you'll be able to join us. We're going to meet, the first session will be on September the 24th from 9.30 to 11.30 on Zoom. And don't be afraid of Zoom because I'm not a technically bright person myself, but I'm able to conquer it. And Christine Anderson in the office has offered to help those who need any assistance. We will meet every other week and the women's evening class on Thursday is also doing this study and so if you don't make the morning class you have a second opportunity for the evening class. The study guide is $12.50 and the book is $15. They're both available in the office or you can go online and request them. They can be shipped for a little extra postage if you if you need that. Um, it is a six session video based study and we look forward to having you join us. Thank you. I'm Suzanne Hearn and I'm here to tell you about the evening women's Bible study group and we're going to be doing the same study that the morning group is doing and it's called get out of your head stop the spiral of toxic thoughts it's a study based on Philippians and the writings of Paul and it takes aim at your thought life and we're going to be doing this in the evenings on zoom from 5 to 6 30 starting September the 24th and going every other week until December 3rd. And what you need to do if you want to take this study and learn how to be transformed and have the mind of Christ is to contact the church and you can get your books here. You need to get a participant's guide and the participant's guide is 1250 and then the book is optional and all these are available in the church office and then you need to contact me so that I can uh, get you on our email list you can find out that information through the church so just in terms of time commitment it is very very doable in terms of the homework it's heavy on personal application is that's where we're going to get a lot of help with thinking about the way we think and changing the way we think so I hope that you'll do this with us and be transformed by the renewing of your mind and have the mind of Christ. Mark chapter 13, verses 33 through 37. Be on guard and keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to you all, stay awake. One of the great themes of the Bible, whether it's through Old Testament prophecies or New Testament prophecies about the Lord's return 
or preparing for our sanctification, or even in a blessing like the Lord's Supper, where we remember the Lord's death until he comes again, is that we should be prepared for the blessings that are coming our way. As we move forward into God's kingdom, we're supposed to be getting ready and helping others to get ready for his return. My name is Jeff Anderson, and I'm the seminarian here at St. Andrews Fort Worth. And it's my privilege to help lead the young adult ministry. Our centerpiece for our ministry is currently a weekly Bible study where we get together from seven to nine and eat and fellowship and then study the Lord's word in preparation for this next generation. We are in interesting times and we're headed to even more interesting times. And it's crucial that we get our young adults ready to lead the way as gospel bearers into this new environment. So if you are post high school to your 30s, single or married, Christian or not, if you're interested in this fellowship, please join us as we prepare the young adult ministry here at St. Andrews. Thank you. Was I looking at the camera because I do this where I like am like crazy? Well, that sounds like an idiot move. Sorry, cut that. <laughs> Four play centers and plenty of manipulatives. Did I say that right? Plenty of me. Now I'm not gonna get it. Manipulatives and plenty of me. <laughs> this is not gonna work. Well, see, I don't think a good blooper is to show somebody crying. Manipulatives. Is that right? Manipulatives. Is that right? Plenty of manipulatives. Buttery, flaky, crust. <laughs> do, you not, do you not make a blooper reel? <laughs> so many of those are blooper reel. Uh, great, book, great books. Great. <laughs> ah! That was great. You don't want to appear in the blooper reel? Anymore? Yeah, you, but you can find some. <laughs> Bible verse and attitude. Attra. Attribute. Attribute. Gosh. It starts every spring with breaks for liturgical season, with breaks for liturgical year, with breaks for liturgical season, Pacific <laughs> activities. Pacific or Atlantic? Specific. <laughs> See, I'm sitting here looking at Lindsay. Just <laughs> stop, stop. Like, I'm just trying to find a closer. I need a closer. That's it. Is that it? Though? Blah 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 blah. Hope to see you there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope. I, I hope to see you there. Nope, nope, not that one. <laughs> 
Hello. Hello. I just can't. I, this is just terrible. <laughs> uh, you did you mention the peanut butter and jelly? I did not. He did not mention the peanut butter Why don't and jelly. You mention the peanut butter? I'll mention the peanut butter and jelly. We are always looking for volunteers to come get in here and get your hands dirty. <laughs> don't get your hands dirty. <laughs> <laughs>